Welcome. So, I just got done with another print. This is kind of a weird one. Um, so this is the CraftBot Flow XL IBX E. Um, that's an amazing printer. I have had nightmares trying to get it set up with Cura. Um, at some point I'll go back and try to get it working with Cura, but for now I just decided I wanted to, I guess, play with the printer. Um, so this is the good, the bad, the ugly. This is, you know, 20, well, about two days with the printer. Um, we got two independent heads. It's really kind of cool. Uh, I have opted to stay away from the Cura for now because it's just not quite there. Um, let's see. So my dome came in yesterday. And same with my doors. Um, quick word of note. There is a lock down here. So if you get one of these things, plug it in. Don't go closing the door because if you close the door, you're locked out. I did both doors. I closed it out and then I had to dive headfirst into the um, into the printer to try to get that plug in there. Let's go upside down for a minute to try to get that plug on there so that way I can actually control the door and turn it on and off and open it. So that was something that probably should have been noted somewhere, uh, but I didn't even know that this thing had a door lock. Kind of cool. Purge tower, actually kind of nifty. Um, you know, I had a failed print with the Craftware slicer, and that's why I really started working on the Cura, but I decided I was going to learn the Craftware and figure things out, and I did. Um, a little bit bigger purge tower, and it seems like it's actually really good. This is a two-color advanced Mervin. Mervin the Martian. Let me just see how good that thing actually is. A little problem down there, but really not bad because that's a really thin area. So it does make sense that the black would kind of bleed through there. So there's that guy. We do have a nice flexible spring steel sheet. There are two pins back there that you kind of line it up with and then these little guys I'm guessing just kind of I have no idea. Um, but it does use a lot of touch points. So one bad thing I noticed is I get shocked a lot when I'm messing with the printer. Um, and messing with the printer unfortunately you do have to do some of that. Uh, I've had the F filament monitoring system kind of mess up a couple of times. Um, that was probably due to also Kira and retract settings being way off. Um, I haven't really had too much issues with the Craftware slicer, hence why I kind of went back. But this little hole here is kind of nifty so this thing automatically does the calibrations um so if you had or have a idxe printer you know that getting your offsets dialed in from one print head to the other print head is kind of a nightmare um, and then you have to redo it every time you do something with the printer and you have to keep testing it um, so this guy actually uses um, electrified touch probe technology um, not really technology because I did that you know ten or four or five years ago on a printer um, 
but basically it electrifies the nozzle and it uses this portion of the heated bed spring steel to actually um, kind of gauge where it's at. This hole right here, it literally sticks the nozzle in there. It goes forward, it goes backwards, it goes side to side, and then it calculates its offsets and that's where it's set. Back up here, we have, let's see, let's go into settings. We got all sorts of things in here. Well, this was, let's see, calibration. So there's your calibration offsets and stuff like that. Um, you can go back here. So one bad thing that I've found is that I cannot control the dome fan with G-code. I'm um, having a heck of a time doing that. So um, that's the dome fan. It actually has a little filter on there. Um, so I had some nasty prints yesterday after I got the dome enclosure and everything on there because, hey, guess what? It gets hot. It does its job. So I'm pretty excited about that, but it was because the dome fan is not coming on. Um, let's see. Moving accesses is actually really nice. Just a quick, simple press the button. extruder gives you these nice warnings when they're cold uh, I found that actually up here this screw right here you screw it in and it pulls the um, idler away from the uh, it basically stops the pinching so you can actually pull the filament out pretty easily trim the excess off when you do have a filament jam and the filament monitoring system is going after you and barking at you. Um, so you can just actually use those screws there, screw it in tight, pull the filament out, give it a nip, and then plug it back in. I have not had an actual jam, just something where the nozzle, I believe, um, it's, it's kind of getting stuck in there when it ex or when it um, retracts for retraction, if it retracts too far. Um, so that's good. Uh, the web interface is all right. Um, the slicing software is kind of basic. Um, so this is it. It's actually pretty nice. You can come over here, you can click the dual mode. And you can literally just click what you want instead of changing start stop G codes and trying to get what you want. Um, slice, you got a basic mode, and then you got this is the one that I was missing the expert mode. And so, you do got some fields in here where you can actually change things. Um, which is once I found that, I decided that's where I want to start just using the Craftware slicer. Um, slices pretty fast, gives you a pretty good idea of what's going on in there. Um, over here, you just, you can save it or you can print it. You can send it right to the web interface here's that um, you got a file section not very robust the one thing that i would say is oops see can't can't even do that um the one thing that i would say that could be quite a bit better would be the fact that it logs you out every like two minutes there we go. There's the camera. Um, getting logged out every two minutes kind of sucks. Kind of cumbersome. Um, you got a history here. That's your temperatures, where they're at. You got your temperatures here. Um, also, I did not find a way to turn the dome fan on from in here. Uh, so you literally have to turn it on from the printer itself. Kind of obnoxious. 
Um, this load and unload from the web interface does not seem to work very consistently. Um, but the one thing that is really, really, really lacking is the option to send G codes. Um, so like on Octoparent, I have a terminal. I can send my printer's G codes as needed. Um, this would help me decipher what code is needed for the dome fan. Um, help me do a lot of things. Help me start and st help me make start and stop scripts for Kira. Help me figure out where my wrong G codes are coming from in Kira. Um, lots of things to help kind of get Kira going. Uh, I'm not sure, like I said, I'm not sure I really want to play with it. Just enjoying actually playing with this um, printer. It's kind of a joy to print with. Um, yes, I've had some weird prints. Here's one. It actually looks really, really good. But for some odd reason, that's out of whack. And at that point, the steering wheel also got out of whack. But overall, it's still a really good printer. This is one of the first ones that I did out of the box. Um, I've done a number of these cubes. I'm also just printing with the um, PLA that they sent to me. I mean, this was, I believe, the very first one and it's just perfect. Um, so, you know, I got, got one for my craft bot or my craft or my form bot here. Oh, this one's not a very good one because I accidentally had support on it. Here's the form bot one. It does a very good job. I think there's something wrong with my black PLA. Um, but it does a very good job, but this is a lot of tweaking. And you can see right there, it's still not just ever so slightly perfect. There's off. And I gotta go in there and I gotta change the offsets by probably 0.1 millimeter to get it perfect. Craftbot just seems absolutely perfect. Black is black, white is white. They don't mix, they're just there. Um, so, overall, very, very impressed. $4,000 printer, yes. The advancements in it, the automation of setting that up really made this printer worth it. Um, really, it is looking at, you know, these doors are actually glass, which I was kind of press, impressed with. Um, but for what I got it for, it's gonna blow, blow it away. Um, so this dome got a front side to it as well. Was fairly easy to install. A lot of these, the screws just kind of inset, so there's like two screws that you screw in, three on this guy, um, and actually just one on the front. So it's easy to come on and off. Learned printing with PLA, you gotta keep it, keep the front half of it off anyways. Um, the extruder motor, I did tear it apart. Um, it's a double geared motor, ouch, it just got zapped. Um, it's a double geared motor it was a little bit hard to put back together, so hopefully I don't have to do that again. Um, but really, overall, just a super nice printer. Comes with not one, but two full nozzle kits. I just ordered the hardened nozzle kits, but yeah, two full nozzle kits uses a different style nozzle. 
then you know your standard nozzles from um, E3D but still very very nice nozzle kit um, I got the, like I said I got the hardened steel nozzles coming um, but I got two full sets they know nozzles are going to jam up they want to make sure that you're ready to print toolkit let's actually talk about the toolkit here real fast this was actually a really good toolkit so we got in here a drill bit case for nozzle clean out some ice purple wipes here we got, I actually buy these, I think at Harbor Freight, um, but that's nice that they include it. Uh, we got a nice, nice nipper, nippers in here. We got um, needles for cleaning the, where is it? For cleaning out the nozzles if they get jammed. Uh, got two nice tweezers in there, uh, grease. They gave me some grease. Um, and then a blunt edged putty knife, um, a decent one. The metal actually goes all the way through the handle, so that's a good one. Um, and then just some Allen keys, some kind of halfway decent Allen keys, actually. Um, two tweezers. So, pretty nice little toolkit and a nice little case. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, we got shipping hardware. I did keep it, um, but basically you lock in the X rail in case you gotta move it. The Y Y rail. Um, I guess it's both, but <laughs> so you just kind of lock it in there and screw those down so that way that can't slide around. Metal, not plastic. They really. Wanted to care for your printer. Been running with their PLA that they gave me. They also gave me three color PLAs. I'm not sure if I'll ever use these or not because I don't like open spooled filaments because they just tangle. But who knows? Maybe I'll play with some colors. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments let me know i'll try to answer them as best as i can thank you